even if you go plant a seed to grow carrots or corns or potatoes, you've got to go out there and water it. You've got to sit there and study it. Is exactly. there worms on it? Do I need to put some pesticide out? Do, what, what, what do I need to do to take care of this plant? Well, people treat their garden better than they treat their bank account. This is Mitch, and welcome to the Real Estate Investor Summit podcast. I have Jordan Goodman here with us today. Um, he's America's Money Answers Man. I have to, America's Money Answers Man. This guy has the answers to the questions about your money. And we've got a very interesting segment today. We're going to talk about how to save tens of thousands of dollars, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, on your mortgages and on your car payments and different hints and tricks that you can do and use to just get over uh, on these huge payments that you're supposed to pay for years and years and years and years. He's gonna show us the tricks of the trade, and believe me, they're worth a fortune. So I'm even excited to be on this. Um, I have payments on a lot of different things, and I'm gonna be taking notes myself, so have your pencil and paper ready. And uh, he's got a, a big following. He's all over the nation, all over the world even. Um, he has a live streaming radio show, I believe. Tell us, by the way, how you doing, Jordan? Thanks Great for doing you, Mitch. <laughs> I'm so excited about you. Like, it wasn't going to go on without even introducing you, man. I'm, I'm excited to hear this news. Um, tell us a little bit about your background, and also sure. I want to let the listeners know about your show, because you have a very wide and long reach. And I, I do. Yeah, I've been in the personal finance uh, journalism field about 40 years. Uh, I was at Money Magazine for 18 years, NBC News for nine years. I've written 13 books on different aspects of personal finance, including the Dictionary of Finance and Investment Terms, a book called Fast Profits and Hard Times, a book called Master Your Debt, all kinds of different books. I'm regular on radio shows, on TV shows. Uh, I have my own show called The Money Answers Show on the Voice America Business Network that I've been doing since 2007 that has a pretty big following that I do every week. Um, so I'm out there. My mission in life, Mitch, is to help people improve their personal finances, use all these resources that they don't even know exist to solve problems. In many cases, they don't even know they have the problem before I'm going to give them the solution for it. Well, we've been kind of brainwashed, haven't we? We just walk around and do what everyone else does. We, you know, we get a 30-year mortgage. We expect it to be paid off in 30 years. Why? There's a way to pay it. You know, I teach my, I own or finance houses to people all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the things I teach them at the closing table is, look, if you'll just make an extra principal payment every year, it'd take 30 years down to 17 and a half years, you know, or something like that. So that's, and then I do the math for them, you know, let's take 12 and a half years times, um, you know, your $800 a month house payment. Look at the hundreds of tens of thousands of dollars that you save. If you could just make 13 payments a year instead of 12, I mean, it's worth it, you know, but. Well, I'm going to accelerate that dramatically, okay? Yeah, that's well. Good. But I'm going to take that 17 years down to five years. How about that? Man, that's why I was so excited to talk to you because if that's all you talk about and we just hang up after that, it's going to be a great show because that's good stuff. Well, let me explain uh, how that works briefly. This is a strategy called mortgage equity optimization. That's kind of what the strategy is called. And literally, it allows you to pay off debt on either your primary residence where you live or investment property in typically about five to seven years instead of 30 years on your existing income. Okay, so let me just briefly describe the existing system and we're gonna contrast that with optimization. The existing system is you get a 30 year mortgage, you make the same payment for 30 years. The first 10 to 15 years, pretty much all interest. You're making very, very little progress on the principal on a traditional mortgage. And meanwhile, you're keeping your income, your salary, your dividends, any kind of income in the checking account earning zero, right? So this works really well for the bank. They get your money for free and they lend it back to you at 5% of the mortgage, 13 you owe forever. Credit. You owe them forever. Right? You owe them forever. So the bank's real happy. And then if you refinance your mortgage, even better because you start a new 30-year clock all over again. Now the interest rate and payment may be a little bit lower, but all those tens of thousands of dollars in interest, you just paid them for the last 10 years or whatever, you just threw it away. So the bank is real happy about the current system. Okay, now we're going to reverse the tables and actually have your money work for you instead of the bank. What a unique idea. All righty. So here's how it works. You use a home equity line of credit, HELOC, which is a liquid line against your house. You can put money in. You can take it out whenever you want. It's the second mortgage against your house. Okay. And it's typically at about the prime rate. Prime rate today is five. So it's going to be about five, something like that. 
the, the secret here is you keep your income, which is normally sitting in the checking account, in the HELOC. Your money is going in there, pushing your balance down every day, okay? And then you take money from the HELOC, pay down your first, and when you combine the two, what they call the blended strategy, you're making dramatically faster payoff of your first mortgage. Let me just do an example, Mitch, which might, might help how this works, okay? Let's say you have a house worth 300,000. Just gonna pick a number here. And say your first mortgage is 200,000 at a good rate, 4%, something like that. You go out and get a HELOC at for 50,000, okay? You just open it up. You haven't used it yet. You write a check on the HELOC, say 50,000 from that towards the first. So now you owe 50,000 on the HELOC and 150 on the first, okay? Now, over the next year, you keep all your income moving in on that HELOC, pushing the balance down every day. And after, say, a year, that HELOC, which was 50,000, is now paid off to zero, okay? So HELOCs are based on what's called average daily balance. How much do I owe today? You give them $1,000, uh, it normally be sitting in your checking account doing nothing. Instead of owing 50,000, you now owe 49,000. You're pushing your balance down, okay? Now, you do have to pay your bills, okay? But the idea is to have all your bills on one credit card. Hopefully, you get freaking flyer miles as well. And so once a month, your balance goes up when you pay that bill. But the rest of the month, you're making progress on that principle every day. Okay, so after a year or so, you've paid that $50,000 off. Then you do it again. You write another $50,000 check in the HELOC towards your first. So instead of owing 150, you now owe 100. You pay the HELOC off. You do that twice more. So after four years, your first is now paid off. And then the fifth year, you pay the HELOC off, and you are now mortgage-free. That makes sense to you? Unbelievable. But I want to go through step one first. You said so you have like a $300,000 house, uh, a balance on your house, okay? No, uh, well, that's what it's worth. The house is worth three hundred, dollars and I'm saying you have a $200,000 mortgage on it. Okay, $200,000 mortgage. Then you go get a $50,000 HELOC, and then you, you just take the, the whole balance of that HELOC and you put it on the mortgage, so now you only owe $150,000. Correct. You just start having your income being sent directly to the HELOC, right? Correct. Like, and so you, not, you now owe 50 on the HELOC, and all that income you have going in, every day you're making a little bit of progress on a HELOC, moving it down at an accelerating pace, okay? And after, say, a year, that 50000 is paid off, okay? There are three things, Mitch, you need to make the strategy work. First thing, you got to have equity in your house. If you have no equity in the house, if you're underwater, there's nothing to borrow against, okay? Second thing, you got to have a decent credit score, 680 or higher to qualify for that HELOC. And the third thing, you got to have positive cash flow during the month. More money coming in than going out. That positive cash flow is what's going into that HELOC, pushing that principal down. Now, the more positive cash flow you have, the, more, the, the quicker you're going to pay it off. I bet the vast majority of your listeners have those three things, and therefore, literally, they could be saving tens of thousands of dollars in needless interest and 25 years or so off their mortgage on their existing level of income. It's just the way you're flowing it is more efficient for you. And you see how every day, your money that's going to that HELOC is pushing your balance down. Your money is working for you instead of the usual way, sitting in the checking account, earning nothing for you. That's amazing. The other key, though, that I liked what you said was because it, it started to get complicated in my mind because I got my bills to pay and everything. But I love what you said. Just get a credit card and put all your bills on that credit card. And then once a month when the statement comes, you go over to your HELOC and you pay it off and the balance exactly. will go back up again. But it'll, it'll still be, you know, you're just reducing the amount of interest you pay every day on your every loan. Every day. Correct. Because... Um, <laughs> You're, you just have your idle money. It's not sitting idle anymore. Correct. It's, it's working for you. It's working it's for you. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, you got something working in your favor instead of sitting in the bank, working in the bank's favor. You got it. <laughs> okay. Is that powerful? <laughs> it is very powerful. And um, how, what, what kind of interest rates are they giving on HELOCs these days? If you it's have about a the prime rate. The prime rate today is five. So it's going to be about five, sometimes even a little bit less than five. But, you know, something in that, that range. Okay, now, so go ahead. we were talking before the show, and you have, a, um, you have a kind of a consult or a form that they can fill out, and, it'll, and you can tell them once they give you their information exactly how fast they can pay off their house. Did I understand that right? That is correct. So when they go to the link on your site, what, there's a place that they go to. They put in a, what's called a personal profile. They put in their income. 
They put in their expenses, they put in their house value, they put in their mortgage, and it's going to say, based on the numbers you just gave us and what you're doing today, it's going to take you 28 and a half years to pay off your mortgage, whatever it may be. And based on those numbers, using optimization, it's going to be 6.3 years, whatever it comes out to be. And it shows you exactly how much in interest you're going to pay versus what you're doing now, how quickly you pay it off, and then step by step. So that the initial consultation is free to kind of figure out if this works for you. And then after that, I say, yeah, I want to pay my mortgage off in six years instead of 30. They take you step by step through the whole thing. I've literally saved people probably millions of dollars. I've been talking about this for about 10 years. It's helped so many people. It's, it's actually gratifying to me to know I've helped people. Imagine a 35-year-old couple, okay, that just bought a home, and their mortgage is paid off by 40 instead of 65. Right? Oh, what a difference is that going to make in their life? The things you can do, I mean, with a free and clear house. One is, my wife just, you know, I've talked to her a thousand times. Um, maybe she's softening up now because we're just to a point, but like the house was off limits. We had it paid off. That's what she wanted. And there was no messing with that house. It didn't matter if I could buy the Empire State Building for whatever I could borrow on my house. She, it wasn't going to happen. Because right. there's a certain comfort. But for right. other people that are a little more adventurous, having that house free and clear, it can, it can give you the opportunity to strike at deals that would have never been in your reach. Correct. You could borrow Correct. against that house, you know, or, or get a HELOC and get some money. Sometimes you come across incredible deals. The only problem is incredible deals require that you move fast generally. And Correct. they generally require that you have cash and can get it done right now. So... So the, it, once it's paid off, you still have that HELOC available, and you can use it for exactly as you say, taking advantage of opportunities like that. Now, this works not only on your own owner-occupied home, but it works for investment property as well. And what's beautiful about it is you've got the HELOC on the rental house, whatever it may be. Your tenants are paying your mortgage off in five years instead of 30 years. So your home, your rental property is free and clear 25 years faster than you ever thought possible. Okay, so if you want to go and, and get this consult, fill out the profile and figure out uh, how long or how short it might be to pay off your house, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go to reinvestorsummit.com forward slash home free. Okay, and I want to put that keyword home free. I picked it for a reason because it's not just about having your home free and clear. It's about you being home free to go do other things and, and enjoy the life that you want to live. And it doesn't stop with houses, does it, Jordan? Correct. Correct. There's all yeah, kinds of other ways to do it. There are other ways to do it. Absolutely. So, I mean, just think of the power of a strategy like that, right? It, and, it, you know, it, it, it makes me really upset when the banks are taking such advantage of people and they don't even know they're taking advantage of them in many cases. So it's a very liberating kind of strategy. It's actually more common around the world, Mitch. You know, Australia and Hong Kong and Canada, other people know about this. But here... It, it hasn't been that well known because the banks have no interest in telling you about it. None. They you know, have the current system. We follow, like, we watch TV a lot here in this country, and it's the biggest propaganda machine in the world. And the, and the big advertisers, the banks and the car companies and the mortgage companies, they, you know, they're professionals and they have psychologists and right. NLP people behind them, and they have everything. They know exactly how to separate you, you from your money and not explain to you what's good for you, but explain what's good for them, which it's business and I get it. Their yeah. job to make a profit for their company and I get it. And it's not illegal or even immoral, I guess, but I, I like what you do is you come in and you show the other side of the coin, you know? Right. We're so brainwashed to believing that we'll always have a house payment that we don't even look for solutions. Right. No? Yeah. no, I mean, there is a solution like this. Now, if you meet those three criteria I mentioned, it's an app. Now, it's a bit of a mind shift, you know? This is not, you're told to keep your money in the checking account and pay for 30 years. That's a good deal. That's what people are told. So it's a bit of a mind shift that you have to kind of get over to like, oh, I'm not, I'm going to keep almost nothing in my checking account, but all my money is going to be going and pushing down my HELOC every day. But once you get over it and you see the benefits of it, that's why filling out this personal profile, you can see exactly in your specific circumstance, how much money you're going to save, tens of thousands of dollars, and how much faster you're going to pay your mortgage off. So. Uh, all all you're talking about is the difficulty in, in breaking a habit that right. we're, you know, if they would have started us out 
saying this is how you get a mortgage. First you, you get the mortgage and then you get the HELOC and then you get the credit card and you put it all. Then we did, we did just be doing that all day long, right? Because that's what we were told to do. But we got this other habit now where we don't do it that way. So you're going to have to break a little habit that we got. We're going to have to be uncomfortable for a minute to get it worked around. But imagine <laughs> taking a 30-year mortgage and, and, and being home free 23 years early, you know, or five years early. My gosh, on a $1,000 mortgage that's about 300 and something thousand dollars. I'm not doing it's the math. A lot. It's a lot. I mean, it's not, it, what, what do they say in my business when you're looking at deals? Well, exactly. What's the ROI? It's like, I don't know. Good enough. You know, it was it, <laughs> somewhere over 25% rate of return. I'm happy. Yeah. Um, and then also, I mean, you use this for everything else. You can pay off your credit cards this way. You can wrap your student loans in there, car loans. I mean, you can use this because the HELOC's at a lower interest rate than all these other things because it's a secured loan. So, well, so that was the next thing that caught my eye because right after the house payment comes the car payment. And what right. is that? There are like seven years now, most of these car payments. Right. What are the, you can reduce these down to a year or two. I mean, I, I'm sorry, probably two years or three years instead of seven. So, so there's a, a, a resource, which again is going to be at the, the site you're giving them there, where they can actually go in and they um, put their existing car payments, what the monthly payment is, how much you owe, the interest rate, all those kind of things. And then it's going to say, Okay, it gives you like a little dial, and it says you pick the car payment you want based on the interest rate and the maturity. So if your car payment is too high right now, one way to get that down would be to lengthen out the maturity. It's going to bring your payment down to a more affordable level. Or you can move it the other way and go for a higher payment at a lower interest rate. It, but you choose. So this little dial is, okay, that's the payment I want. You click on that, and you hit submit. And then a bunch of credit unions from around the country are competing for your business to give you a better car loan. What's happening today is a lot of people are becoming delinquent or defaulting on their car loans because they took on some pretty big car loans the last few years. And uh, they're getting their cars repossessed. It's about, up about double what it was a year ago. Um, and I'm seeing car loans as, as, as low as, well, I don't know if it's still here today because I think we had a little rate adjustment, but as low as 1.25%. Uh, yeah, it's not about the interest rate, it's about the payment because a lot of people can't afford the payments. The interest rate may be decent. So say you have one point whatever percent and you're paying $500 a month and you just, that's really busting your budget. If you brought that, say for three years, if you brought that out to maybe six years, maybe it'd be 250 a month. So you'd be able to afford it more. But you are in the driver's seat of choosing which payment you want at what interest rate, as opposed to you just accepting whatever the car dealership or lender now, what's happened lately is there's a lot of subprime lenders that have gotten into the car loan business because it's very high interest rates. And the reason they've done that is they put in your car what's called a defeat device, which means you miss your car payment, they turn your car off remotely from where you're driving along the highway and all of a sudden your car dies. It's because you didn't make your payment. And through the GPS, they know exactly where to pick up your car. So that is emboldened the car lenders to make subprime loans they did in the past. They had to go chase people all around with a guy with a shotgun in the middle of the night, you know. They don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. So that means they don't have to do that. To get go ahead and take chances on people they would never take chances on. Uh, but let's talk about something else. And maybe it's off task, but I, I think it's very important for our listeners. You know, this stuff is available to credit to people who have credit of like a 680 or better. And I, I've said before, you have no idea how much money you're losing in your lifetime if, you go, if you're walking around with bad credit. Anything right. 680. I mean, really, you should have like a 750 score. If you're going to do it, let's do it. Please, if you don't have good credit, look into it. I've got podcasts on it, or maybe you have a solution for credit. But um, go to reinvestorsummit.com forward slash home free no spaces, just right there, home free, all over case. And, and, and do this profile, one for your house, one uh, maybe check out and see if there's a better rate for your car. Do you have any suggestions for people with bad credit? I don't know if you want to go this direction. Absolutely. Or not. Oh, yeah. Anything financial, Mitch. I've been doing this a long, long time. So you, you want to, the main thing with your credit is to get errors off your credit report. And there's a lot of errors, most of the things. And that's lowering your credit score in a major, major way. So uh, there's a law called the FACTA law, the Fair and Accurate Credit Transactions Act, which gives you the right to challenge errors in your credit report. And if they can't prove it's accurate, that you paid late or whatever, it has to come off your credit report within 30 days. That's the rule. 
Now, most people don't know about that, that most people don't challenge. One of the resources that you'll get at the website you just gave them is a place that does exactly that for you. It challenges credit uh, report errors, and the average credit score goes up 100 points or more when that kind of thing happens. Uh, and in some cases, the real secret, Mitch, is even if it's accurate, but if the creditor doesn't get back to the credit bureau within 30 days, it comes off anyway. Well, now, I was going to say, I was going to say, what the underlying theme of this is, is they are so overwhelmed that they cannot possibly deal with the amount of inquiries or challenges that they have. They cannot possibly do it. So what they do is when they see a letter from a, 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 an important attorney or they see a, a challenge or a demand from an attorney or an impressive looking letterhead, they just don't even try. They just take it off. So to your point, you may even send in some challenges to some things that probably belong on your credit report, Correct. but don't be surprised if they just get removed because Correct. there is a huge penalty for these people if they don't um, act within a certain amount of time. Correct. And, and the lawyers know that. And the lawyers know that they can charge, a, you know, instead of being like normally 250 they just put 450 an hour as their fee, and they know they're going to win if it clicks over this, this date, and they Correct. haven't seen something. So, so it's a whole big game, but the point is you can get your credit score much higher, even if you've had challenges in the past and done things. So that's every time your score is higher, you're going to have more availability to credit, and you're going to have much lower interest rates. So it pays off both in credit cards, car loans, mortgages, the whole world of credit is at your feet. Yeah, I did. I, so let's we digress. The, the underlying theme was if you don't have a good credit score, it's costing you a fortune over your lifetime. Correct. Everything's Correct. more expensive. Um, so tell us what's next for you. Uh, All right, so what's, what's next? The next thing I want to talk about is how to earn passive income from real estate. I mean, what you talk about often is active, what I would say. You're buying, you're flipping, yeah. you're wholesaling. Great. But for some people, they just don't want to do that, or they don't want to do it much, or even their personality is not right for it. But there's a completely passive way to earn income uh, where you have the professionals do it for you, actually. Uh, these are called secured real estate funds. And typically, they're going to pay about an 8% yield on an annual basis, send you monthly checks, which you can take into your checking account if you like, or you can reinvest them and have your money compounding at an 8% yield. Now, what they're doing... Well, it's into your HELOC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're correct. Um, and what they're doing is they're lending money short-term, like over a year, to commercial real estate projects all over the country. Uh, medical offices, apartment building, rehabs, uh, assisted living, student housing, parking lots, just all kinds of different commercial properties all over the country. And they've got the expertise to vet it all out. The maximum they lend is 70% of the value of the property. So 70% LTV max. Uh, they've been doing this for many, many years. And so in one place, you have a diversified portfolio of maybe 30 different projects at any particular time. The minimum is only 5,000 to get into something like this. The minimum hold time is one year, and after that you can get your money whenever you like. And there's no commissions. The full amount that you invest gets the 8% plus. And not only do you get the 8% from the mortgage, but when the buildings that they're lending to sell at a profit, they share some of that profit with the shareholders, with you, and you get 80% of that. So, for example, last year, the fund that I'm talking about particularly paid 8.7, 8% from the interest, 0.7 from the profit sharing. And over time, that'll probably grow a little bit as well. So, as opposed to keeping your money in a CD or money market fund earning zero these days, there's a way through real estate, well-managed real estate, passively, you can get 8% plus. And can they, can they learn about that at the link also? Absolutely. There's a link for all these things at the link you're offering them, correct? All right. Okay, so all the things we're talking about, whichever ones interest you or all of them, if they interest you, just go to reinvestorsummit.com forward slash home free. And we're going to teach you how to get home free, baby, so that you got the spare time and you don't, I don't know. I've been financially independent for many, many years now. And I can't tell you what a relief it is. And uh, despite my receding hairline, I don't worry about much anymore. Um, I can't remember the last time I looked at what the price of gas is. or I just live in a different world. I mean, if I need something, I go get it. And uh, it's all because of planning. You know, Robert Kiyosaki made an impression on me, whether you like him or not. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm in the middle on all, a lot of that stuff. But... Sometimes people say key things that stay with me for a lifetime. And one of the things that he said was, um, you know, the, 
the poor dad's family, they didn't talk about money at the dinner table. Right. The rich dad's family, they all talked about money every day at the table. That's why they were rich. They understood how money works. They understood the, the minutia of it. They understood the little tricks in the, in the hints and tips on how to get ahead. And so what you're saying here is learn how money works and use it to your advantage. Um, it pays off big time to learn about these things. Uh, one of the books I did, I won't go into detail, is called Master Your Money Type. It's about people's financial personalities. And you and I would be called strivers. That's what I call them. Called what? Strivers. Strivers. Drivers. Strivers. People who yeah. want to strive to do better. Oh, strivers. 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 Correct. Um, one of the other types, which you're just talking about, is what I call ostriches. Like, I'm not dealing with money. It'll take care of itself. Head in the sand. I don't open statements. I don't do any of this kind of stuff. I don't care about money. You know? So those would be two examples of the opposites. Strivers do a lot better than ostriches. Let's put it that way. You know? Well, it makes sense. I mean, if, if, if a lot of people say, you know, I'm always living paycheck to paycheck. I'm just damn near broke all the time. It says, well, why am I broke? And why, 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 why are you where you at? And I, I said, well, I, I'm not exactly sure. It's a huge topic, but let's just start with the beginning. Like how many books have you read about money? How many seminars or webinars do you watch? How much do you contemplate where you're at and how to get to a different place? And it's always, I don't. They don't think about it at all. I would uh, say that the key to success is between your ears. Okay, it's not the world. It's the way you look at the world. And I mean, you and I have been very successful doing these things. Lots of people are not because it's not in their mindset to become self-sufficient and wealthy. I mean, I'm giving them some tips that'll help them there. They've got to take action on these things. Of, I'm handing you actual gold and jewels and diamonds. And if you don't do something with it, it's not going to do any good for you. Right. And, <laughs> and the goods here. it's not about making money your God or anything like that. It, but, it, but you have to take care. I mean, even if you go plant a seed to grow carrots or corns or potatoes, you've got to go out there and water it. You've got to sit there and study it. Exactly. Is there worms on it? Do I need to put some pesticide out? Do, what do, what what do I need to do to take care of this plant? Well, people treat their garden better than they treat their bank account. It's true. It's true. And the banks encourage that. They want you to have as big deposits as possible on which they're paying nothing because that's their deposits that they use to get money from you when they lend you for a credit card or a mortgage or car loan, whatever it may be. Let me give some other resources that could be helpful to people. Yeah, I'd love that. Please, please okay. do. So I'm going to solve a problem people don't even know they have, okay? which is if you have an adjust rate mortgage, in many, many cases, the payments you've been making are incorrect because an adjust rate mortgage is going up and down based on some kind of an index. Could be LIBOR, could be a prime rate, could be national mortgage rate, whatever it may be, but it's going up and down based on some index. The banks in many cases get that wrong, okay? and particularly when a mortgage is sold from one mortgage servicing company to another. Things get messed up all the time. Yeah, and I bet you it always. It, I bet you it's incorrect in their favor, not in yours. Correct, correct. So one of the things that the website you have is a, a resource that'll help you verify, in effect, audit your adjust rate mortgage. And about forty percent of the time, they find it's wrong, and then they supply a detailed letter and say, and they see your original contract, what your payments have been. Here's how much they've paid. Here's how much they should have paid you should be sending them a check for $8,000 or whatever it comes out to be in overpayments and then correct their payments to the new correct level. So they know all the indexes and when things go up, when things go down, what it should have been. And in many, many cases find tremendous errors in adjust rate mortgage payments. So I have no doubt that happens because I've been with a bank before and we had an interest only uh, account based on a floating rate yep. that was adjustable um, every day practically and i'm sorry it was adjustable once a month but the rate hadn't changed for months and i couldn't figure out how they came to my payment i exactly. mean it's just interest only simple interest there's x amount of days in a month i said are you using this 362 day year or 365 day year just tell me what you're doing and i'll i'll go with the three days if you're doing something different but tell me what it is because I need to figure out how you're doing it. I never could get to their number. Their number was always higher than my number. Correct. Here's the problem. This is leading up to my question. I guess you have to send an attorney letter to get them to, because I never could get anyone to answer me or do anything about it. Not an attorney letter. These are people I'm referring to are called mortgage auditors. They're auditing your mortgage. 
and they do it in an extremely scientific way. And they've got all these algorithms and they know where interest rates are and what it should be. And they give a, a very formal letter saying, here's what has been paid. Here's what should have been paid. Here's the difference. And here's the way your payment should be adjusted to. And the banks will say, okay, they've, they've proven it. And usually the banks will, will agree. And, and if not, they'll advocate for you. But usually when it's proven in that systematic way, the banks will agree and uh, refund your money and, and get your payments done. And if it, if it goes the other way, if you've been paying too little, you don't have to do anything, right? You can only object if you pay too much. Uh, but, um, but that's what I was saying. Someone, they'll, adv- they'll advocate for you if, they don't, if the bank doesn't respond because I, I, could never, I could never get to anybody that would make a decision. And it was Correct. very frustrating. I finally just paid off the loans and moved to another situation. But I- so that's the first thing is what's called verifying your mortgage. Okay? And the second thing related to this is verifying your escrow. Banks do the same thing where they're over escrowing for property taxes and, and property insurance. Many, many cases, they're taking out too much for those things. And it's in. They, they do an analysis, an audit of your escrow. And in many, many cases, find that you've been paying too much, you're escrowing too much, and you have money sitting there in this escrow doing nothing for you because of insurance and property taxes being actually lower than they've been holding for. And they do the same thing. Here it is. Here's what you've been escrowing. Here's what you should be. Here's the amount of refund you should be giving them. And here's a new escrow. So the same people do both of those services, verifying their mortgage and verifying their escrow. I just gave your people thousands of dollars that they didn't even know they, they were deserving. This has been some great advice. I want all of you to go to reinvestorsummit.com forward slash home free and do your profiles and, 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 and follow up on some of this stuff. Um, check out um, how to get your credit repaired. Pick something and do it because you're going to get ahead. Chances are, um, if, if you'll just take any one of these ideas and roll your sleeves up and get it done, you're going to save tens of thousands of dollars. So that's reinvestorsummit.com forward slash home free. Man, I really, really want to talk to you again. Can we do another segment? Absolutely. All right. You, you get together a couple, because I know you have like a list a mile long of hints. I do. <laughs> I have many more to go. <laughs> I'm going to talk to my... My, my girl, Julie, she's going to reschedule us for, for really soon, too. I don't want this to go way out because you have some good stuff there. I would like for you to also, could you please, uh, at, over there at the show notes, can you post the books that you've written for us? Sure. Absolutely. There's 13 of them. Yeah, yeah please post them all. Uh, and if you have your, any speaking engagements or whatever, I think you're very fascinating, Jordan, and you're a pleasure to talk to. Um, but thanks. Yeah. And you'll also get my website. I, I do take emails as well. So at, at your uh, show notes, there's a website where they can email me as well. Yeah, we'll get you all, the con- all the contact information, phone numbers, w- emails, everything will be over there. reinvestorsummit.com forward slash home free. This is Mitch Steven with the Real Estate Investor Summit podcast. I want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time to get you some Jordan Goodman and learn how to get ahead. Uh, just some little bitty things to do that'll change your life by tens of thousands of dollars, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in a lot of cases. Um, It's been an eye opener. I'm going to be checking into some refinancing of some properties or uh, getting some HELOCs because uh, this is just too good not to do. So I'm going to follow your advice myself, Jordan. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thanks so much, Mitch. Really appreciate it. Hey, all right, you guys, this is Mitch Steven, Real Estate Investor Summit Podcast. We're out of here.